Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of Operation Theseus, Gazala 1942. This is from Vuka Simulations out of Germany. Uh, I've not done, uh, not seen much of their games until recently, and uh, I have to say I'm very impressed with the uh, production quality, the uh, weight of the components, the, the graphic design that they do. Um, so Operation Theseus, again, World War II, in North Africa. Um, this is a complexity of 7 out of 10 and a solitaire suitability of 8 out of 10. So uh, after the Commonwealth Offensive, Operation Crusader, the Axis overran Cyrenicia for a second time and prepared for the capture of Tobruk. If successful, the Axis might have the opportunity to drive to Egypt, perhaps crossing the River Nile and reaching Cairo. To prevent this, the British 8th Army established a defensive line consisting of immense minefields and fortified positions of some 43 miles in length. This is an operational uh, uh, game. The scale is infantry brigades, tank battalions. The scale is 1 to 6 days. The map scale is 2.2 miles per hex. There are three scenarios, including a campaign. The game time is 60 minutes to 10 hours, depending on the scenario. Uh, two players or solitaire play designed by... Uh, I believe Dirk Blenemann. So one thing I noticed is that this is not this does not come shrink wrapped. I, guess, I assume in, in an effort to save plastic, uh, so it's just covered with these uh, stickers that uh, you know seal the box. And once you crack the seal, then you've opened the game. So let's crack that seal and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. And click the bell. One ringy dingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The seals are cracked. And the lid is open. Here we go. All right. First thing on top is a rule book, as expected. And this is kind of a magazine stock, kind of glossy. Um, got a little bit of a sheen to it. You can see the lights reflecting off of it, so that may or may not affect your enjoyment. Um, it's a 34 page rule book, full color. Looks like the rules go to page 25 and the scenarios start from 25 to 7. Then we got designer notes, player notes, historical context, and an index, which is always appreciated. So there's a map of the real world area that we're going to be playing in. And then a zoomed in situation of what's happening. It's kind of like you're getting your mission briefing in a modern uh, Jack Ryan kind of movie. There's all stuff. So, all right. So, got full color. Uh, it says no. We decided to use British English for this game, as we think this is appropriate for games covering the campaign in the Western Desert. So, expect your colors to have an, a U in them. Um, You start out with this, the standard, uh, you know, designation for the different combat units, um, and then the detail of the counters, different markers, things like that. Combat ruler, that's kind of an interesting, unique thing for this game. Uh, it's got your stacking limits for Commonwealth and Axis, so on and so forth. Again, uh, it's it's a, it's it's I want to say I don't want to say it's dense text. It's you know as you can see here it's you know there's content, but there are a lot of color graphics and things like that to help guide you and give examples. So that's good. Um, interested to see how the system works. It looks looks kind of interesting. And obviously since I'm interested, it would be interesting. All right, so you got your your general system. I know the other games I've seen in this have an operations or an actions phase and an admin phase or an ops phase that alternate. So that's distinctive of this game system. Here's a very detailed combat sequence example, which is always appreciated. So and there you go. Um, we got the designer's notes. Did I miss the scenarios? We did miss the scenarios. So here they are right here. 
Because Gazala comes with one solitaire training scenario, one introductory scenario, and the campaign. The initial deployment and reinforcements can be found in the setup displays. You will find details regarding special conditions, victory conditions in the relevant section of each scenario. Note special scenario rules supersede all general rules. Each scenario begins with the ops phase, so the first admin phase is skipped. Scenario 1, Assault on Mbir Hakim. Hakim. Uh, there is no sequence of play to follow. Simply put, all you do is activate the area division until either victory is achieved or the area division has been activated six times. So it's a very simple, simple rule. All right, scenario two, the opening phase. This scenario recreates the action which took place during the initial stages of the Gazala battles. It can com be completed in under five hours as recommended for players with limited playing time on their hands. Five hours for me would take like a month of evenings. Uh, and then scenario three, the Gazala battles. This scenario is the centerpiece of the game, allowing players to recreate the Gazala battles in their entirety and complete complete it in under 10 hours. So that's pretty good, eight game turns. Um, Special rules, see the setup display, victory conditions. So each scenario is clearly spelled out here, and then the combat sequence example we saw earlier. So that is the rule book. One distinctive this has is these combat multiplier chits down here, and they describe it at the end of the index. The probability deviating of the combat multiplier chits from the linear distribution is intentional and a result of elaborate playtesting. The reason behind this, one of the basic ideas of the system is to reduce the optimization of probabilities by the players. This applies not only, but also to the combat system and the combat chits. We decided, however, to include seven optional replacement chits in Operation Theseus to allow players to play with a linear distribution of the multipliers if they prefer. So 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 29 get replaced with 8, 10, 8, 14, so on and so forth. So uh, it gives you just a straight uh, deterministic uh, combat resolution table uh, versus the uh, more chaotic, probably more realistic uh, variable combat. So, cool, 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 cool. That's the rule book. Now we've got a map, and we'll take a look at that in detail later. We have a red and a black die, and red wins five to four. And then we have our counter sheets. This is four counter sheets, They're kind of narrower, um, which is cool, but they are in fact pre-rounded, which is nice. They punch pretty cleanly and they're pretty sturdy. I do like how they're color coordinated or color coded, I should say, by uh, you know division, unit, so on and so forth. So it makes it easier to find the ones you want activate them together, as it were. So there's one sheet of counters. And then we've got the second, which has apparently activation chits and your victory point chits and minefield markers. Uh, looks like it might be a chit pull system, which would be really awesome. Very solo friendly. Got these trackers, which go from 0, 1, 2, 3 on one side up to 7, which are probably for ammo, rockets, so on and so forth. Got a lot of those. There's four counter sheets. And then we've got different uh, improved defense, isolated, assigned, assigned, uh, British and German, current die roll marker, modifier, and then those uh, combat resolution chits. Those are all there. And then the optional combat multiplier chits are right here with the white A next to them, as we mentioned before. And then these are some hex, I guess, overlays perhaps, or victory points, which are nice. I like this because you don't have to remember where on the map they are. You can put these down and mark them. And then this combat results table and ruler. Interesting to see how this works. This is going to be very cool. It's, uh, it has your modified d10 roll and it goes through 20 so you have to modify it quite a bit to get up to 20 but that's very interesting so then we also have these player aid cards Let me pull those out pull all the stuff out here 
And we have player aid card one, or A, excuse me, which is the combat results. And one of the things that's nice about these is these would normally, with other games, be cardstock. And these are heavy duty chipboard. So that's very nice. And then we got our combat sequence and various tables and flowcharts. So that's A. And then we've got player aid B. Has some isolation effects, command and supply, so on and so forth. Details of uh, the counters and the data on them. And then we've got the setup for scenario two and three, the board setup. This is scenario one setup right here, scenario two and three board setup. And the allied forces and markers. So these are the axis forces and markers and the allied forces and markers for two and three. And then all of scenario one is there. And then, so you got three of those player aid cards, and then you've also got the board for the um, turn track, formation assignment boxes, uh, game turn track, and your various units and their deployments. Uh, the DRM, victory points, air unit holding, so on and so forth. So this is set next to the board. And like some of their other games, I've noticed that some of these charts are actually on the board as well, which makes this great for solo play, because you can set it off to the side uh, near you. So I'll add that one thing when they when uh, I got this from VUCA, so they sent me this box, but then they also sent me this side packet here. Um, and I can tell it's got player aid one and probably player aid B in here, which makes me think these are corrections. So they already have the game and then they sealed it. so. I'm not sure what the differences would be. Nothing on the terrain effects chart is particularly jumping out at me. So let's look at the uh, CRT table here and see what it's got. And that's a lot of numbers. So I'm only, I can only assume that they've sent this as a replacement that there's some errata on here that I'm not aware of that uh, if you order this directly from VUCA which is where you would get it you would probably get this as well and it too is sealed but I'm not going to open this because I want to make sure what I'm doing before I mix them up so just so you know that that is probably not in the box it'll probably be shipped with it so let's crack open that board all right so here's this map from Operation Theseus as you can see, it's a large uh, desert scale, obviously, or a large desert area, because it's North Africa, obviously. And here you get the Mediterranean, I believe. Uh, and then your uh, different tracks. Now, some of these tracks are actually on the, um, uh, the sideboard that comes with it. So it's interesting that they're on this as well as the uh, as that sideboard. So I guess you get to choose which you use, so to speak. So formation, activation, reaction, track, action points, formation assignment boxes, access forces. Here's your stacking limit chart, which is very nice to have right there on the board. Now, one thing for playing this solo is obviously you've got stuff on upside down on the other side of the board. So that gets kind of a, can be kind of a nuisance at times, but should be work. You should be able to work through it. The mounted board, it's a very nice board, but you know, it's got to take some adjustment to put a little weight on it and it'll start sitting flat. Knight's Bridge. And we got 0.209. The El Marasas, the Chroma, and the Hakim, so on and so forth. So that is a look at the map board. It's very beautiful. I like the the detailed waves out here in the ocean. I also like that they didn't extend the hex grid out into the ocean to kind of keep it uh, keep it thematic. You know, even though you can go out there, it's just it's so nice that it's you know it's like oh there's the ocean coming up on there, and I like the relief 
uh, on the map, the topography. Very, very, very nice um, graphic design on their games. It's very, very cool. So let's recap everything that you get in the box now. So if you pick up a copy of Operation Theseus, Gazala 1942 from Buka Simulations, you're going to get this beautiful box. You're going to get that beautiful game board we just looked at. You're going to get a game turn track, three setup and uh, player aid cards on very thick chipboard. You're going to get four sheets of counters and markers. You're going to get two dice. Oh, black one that time, five to two. And you are going to get the rule book. Everything in the box for Operation Theseus. Because all 1942 Vuka simulations. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!